Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, welcome to Inform Your Community's soft launch event, where our events combine information with fun. So we're hoping to have some fun, learn some new things, and end up with a really cool uh, craft project, finished product. Um, we have a website coming soon. Our social media is up and running. So find us there, follow us, and um, we hope to see you all at more events soon. So today we're gonna learn about why pride is an important celebration, what pride is, why we celebrate it, and um, we're just gonna have some fun and leave with a beautiful sand art pot. So I'm gonna turn it over to Stacy to tell us um, how we get started. Excellent. So first things first is this is going to be a little bit of a messy craft. So if you can, you want to make sure you're doing it at a place that uh, you don't mind getting messy. Uh, if it's a place you do mind getting messy, then you want to use a mat, maybe lay down a towel, uh, something that's washable or that's disposable, a newspaper, so that any glue or, or, or anything that gets on it won't destroy what's underneath it. So make sure to protect your surfaces. Once you have that, uh, and you can gather that while I'm still talking. Once you have that, then you want to gather your materials. And everybody on the call, uh, I believe, has a kit that they got from Inform Your Community. <laughs> but there's also uh, a materials list available. So if you didn't have the kit, then hopefully you got the materials list uh, and you'd be able to purchase those uh, items on your own and, and have them ready for the craft when we set up. So part of your materials that you should have are sand in a variety of colors as you see here. I think you can see almost every color, but it's uh, purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, black, brown, blue, pink, and white. And those are, that's the order we're going to do them in. Uh, and if um, Robbie perhaps can write in the chat the order of those colors, uh, that would be fantastic so that everybody knows what color they have a reference in, in case I go too fast. So those are the colors we're going to put in our, uh, our little flower pot. Now, conveniently, the flower pot is just what would be called a shot glass. So there's uh, a plastic kind for younger kids so they don't hurt themselves. There's no risk of, you know, it, or less risk of it breaking and cracking, and doing any damage. But for uh, older folks, there's a, a glass one that you can also use. So either of these is fine. The main point is that you want to definitely um, have it see so. So the whole beauty of this craft is that you'll be able to see the colors through the through the, the material here. So whether it's plastic or glass, just make sure it's see through. You also don't want to go with something too big unless everything is proportional. We'll talk a bit more about that later. But uh, if you have tiny flowers, you want to go with a small a smaller glass. If you have big flowers, you want to go with bigger glass. You keep in mind a bigger um, flower pot. Keep in mind that the you need to have enough sand to fill it. So everybody should have gotten exactly enough sand to fill either of these containers. So whichever one you want to do, again, this one's recommended for younger kids, the glass is for, <laughs> for older kids uh, with adult supervision or adults. Um, but you have enough sand to fill either one of these to the right level. The other thing that you need for this craft are the flowers, which is the most fun part because you can pick any kind of flowers you want because in, in the world out there, there's lots of different kinds of flowers. So if you're, you're keen on a particular type of color flower, you want all white flowers or a two color flower, a two color arrangement, whatever you want. I prefer lots of color flowers. So I gave all of you lots of color flowers and also the <laughs> colors in the flowers uh, have the same colors as all of the colors we'll have in our sand. So you can use all of them, you can use some of the, the flowers, whatever you want it to look like in the end. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. One thing I'll uh, mention in terms of the flowers, when you do get, the, you'll notice, it's very important that the flowers have a, a, a big enough stem. So I'll just show that to you. You want it to have a stem because it needs to get, you need to dig that right into that sand. And if it's a very short stem, it's not going to go deep enough and it'll just fall right out. So we have lots of different types of flowers that you've got. Um, and when you're thinking about your flowers, the other thing I'll mention is you don't want something too big. That's a little ridiculous. That's not going to work, right? You also don't want anything too flashy. If you had, um, you know, 
some, some, you know, maybe some white with a nice flash would do. But if you have everything really flashy, it might not, um, it might all blend together. So you want to have a nice balance of colors, but also not too much flash. Um, another thing I would say is you want the size of the flowers to be proportional. So you'll notice there's nothing like this on my right in this hand. There's nothing like this in your flower, uh, in the flowers you have, because that wouldn't, it just wouldn't be proportional. You'd never see a flower with this type of leaf on it. So you want your flowers to be about the same, uh, uh, the leaves, anything you put in to be about the same type of size. So not too big, um, but you want a variety of sizes, some a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, but you wouldn't want to see, for example, something like this with a tiny little flower like that. So scale is important. So you have your flowers, you have a bunch of different types. Other thing I'll mention about the flowers is you'll see them in different um, phases of, of growth. So you have, for example, you may have some of these little buds, and then you have this one that looks like it just barely bloomed. And then of course you have some flowers that are in full bloom. And that helps to make it look a little bit more realistic that there's lots of different phases of, of plant life, flower life in your, in your flowers. The other thing I'm going to mention, the last really have to have this craft is the blue. So you all should have some white glue. I like white glue because you can see where it is easily. Um, once it starts drying, if, it's, if it started off clearer, it's hard to tell if it's drying or not. Whereas white glue that dries clear and you wanna make sure that it says dries clear, white glue that dries clear, um, you'll see where it is in the process. And that becomes important later when we're dealing with the sand and gluing sand is very tricky. So we'll talk more about the glue later. Some optional, uh, an optional item you may want if you have in the house is a toothpick uh, that we will also talk about later, but that comes in handy when you're combining that, that glue and sand. So those are our materials. Um, and from there, we can just move along with the craft unless uh, Tyler or Robbie you wanted to, to add anything. I don't think so. I think we could um, get started and we'll talk about it as we go. Excellent, that's fantastic. Uh, so we're so excited to be doing this craft today. Um, today is actually the, the anniversary uh, of the national legalization of same-sex marriage, which is just fantastic. So uh, men and men can get married, women and women can get married. And so it's a very important uh, day to celebrate in Pride Month, uh, this particular day, uh, uh, June 26 is such a great day. So um, we can get right started. First, you want to pick your, pick which vessel you want for your craft. So you're going to go with the glass one, you're going to go with the plastic one. I'm going to do both just to show you a little bit of a difference. And then you just want to do the colors in order. Um, and we're going to start with our purple. Now, you should know that all of you, I believe, have uh, the pre, uh, pre, pre-made ones uh, in little plastic bags, you can just go ahead and dump that whole purple one right into your vessel, right into your flower pot, okay? So in my case, I know that it was half a teaspoon. So I'm going to take my little mixture here. I'm gonna put half a teaspoon in this one and half a teaspoon in my other one. And you should have enough materials that if you have multiple of the flower pots, you can actually make multiples of these. Um, except perhaps for this for the sand. So so I would stick with with one or two to start with. Okay, so you'll see it fills up just enough. And what what's important is you see from the side, you can see the purple. And that's important. So you maybe shake it up a tiny bit just to make sure it flattens out. And then you'll go to your next color. So what we're going to do right now is we're just going to go in order. And you can see me doing this. I'll let you know what color you're picking. And while we're doing this, because uh, we could talk for a minute about why these colors are important. So green is the next color. So we put in, in purple and then we put in blue and you're gonna see from the side, you know, you can see how much is showing from the side and that's what's gonna be important. You'll also notice by the way, that um, it could get uneven Ideally, you want it flat, but it's sand. You can have fun with it. That's not a problem. So if it becomes uneven, you can just start putting a little bit more on one side. What you don't want to happen is for it to all start being like a, a mountain. 
going all on one side. So you do want each layer to end up being relatively flat. We're going to do yellow next. So you're opening up your little packet of sand. Stacy? Yes. We have a question. Okay, sure. So you do a teaspoon of each, I guess? You can do, that is a great question. You can put your whole packet, one whole packet of yellow into your to yours. I've already measured it for you so that it's a teaspoon. So your packet of yellow is a teaspoon. Does that answer your question? Yes. Excellent, thank you. I have a question. Yes. What if we're colorblind and we accidentally put the blue in first? <laughs> <laughs> Not that, that I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> that is an excellent question. If you have not put any other colors in, that's an easy one. You can just dump it out on a, on a you know, in a bowl or something, pour it back in. If you've already done that, then um, you probably want to just keep going and pull in a happy, happy, um, a happy mistake, I think we call those, and, and go with the flow, right? Um, a lot of uh, today is about uh, inclusivity and, uh, uh, you know, doing things the way uh, we, we want to do them. Uh, you know, um, uh, being who we are and, 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 you know, celebrating that expressing ourselves the way we want to express ourselves. So if you wanted to express yourself with blue first, then you go for it. Okay. Thank you. And so, um, red is next. And so, um, Tyler, did you want to tell us a little bit about the colors? Black is next, by the way. Sure. So the colors ultimately come from, um, in 1978, Gilbert Baker created the rainbow flag to represent the community um, because he was asked by Harvey Milk. The colors weren't originally all the same as they are now, because uh, but they ran out of fabric to to print all of the original colors. So that's how we ended up with the rainbow that we have. Um, the red represents life, orange represents healing, yellow represents sunlight, green represents nature, blue represents magic and art, and purple represents serenity and spirit. Um, and then as time went on, this flag evolved. So there was a newer version that that was made that incorporated the brown and the black colors to incorporate people of uh, different communities to, to make everybody feel more, even more included in the in the rainbow flag. And then in 1999, we also got the transgender flag with the colors blue, pink, and white to represent different gender identities. And the flag that we're making today is uh, the newest evolved version of the pride flag called the progress pride pride flag which was created in 2018 and is a combination of all of these flags together with the rainbow flag the newer version of it and the transgender flag and is widely recognized as an even more inclusive version of that first flag that was made in 1978. thank you tyler that's really helpful to know we have all those beautiful colors here and while you were talking uh, we put in the brown we put in the blue the light blue and now we're on the pink. I'm a little bit behind. I'm still doing red. Uh, we can take I... it a little slower. That is fine. And, and actually, it's a good time. Tyler, you mentioned community. Can you tell us what, you know, what is the LGBTQ plus community? So the LGBTQ plus community is a community for people who do not fit into the idea that the only options for their gender are boy or girl, and that the only options for who they can like or have a crush on are people of their opposite gender. Um, it is an acronym that stands for lesbian, gay, bi, trans, and queer questioning. The plus at the end is representative of the many other identities which still fit into the community, but there are so many that not all of them can fit into one small acronym, so we put the plus there to represent all of them. And all of these identities exist on a broad range or what we call a spectrum. And a person's identity can be anywhere on that spectrum. Each person can identify themselves anywhere on this spectrum at any time. For some people, this identity stays the same. And for some, it doesn't move. And for others, it, it can be more, more fluid and change at, at different times, depending on how they're feeling. 
And uh, these identities are all further defined in our additional resources that will be sent out after the event. And stay tuned for those. We'll also ask you to uh, fill out a survey about the event. Let us know what you thought of it. And uh, I don't know if everybody's caught up yet, but we're at uh, at white on mine. But if you're if you've uh, not gotten to white yet, it's totally fine. In the chat, you'll find the order that you want to put them in. And like Tyler said, this order, it, it sure it's sand. You can put it in any order you want. Uh, and you certainly, uh, as as we discussed, you know, express yourself the way you want to express yourself is is kind of part of the the what we're talking about today. Um, the way we're the way I'm showing you how to do it is basically representing the flag that Tyler told us about. So you see uh, the original flag colors uh, from the Gilbert um, Pride flag that we started with, and then adding a black and brown to represent different uh, uh, racial communities and then the, the transgender flag colors as well. And all of those are comprised now to a kind of, what is a, a new uh, prog called progress pride flag. Um, so the new pride flag that you'll probably be seeing this month if you haven't already seen it, that has the um, uh, triangle and then the original stripe colors this way. So triangle stripes for the black, brown, uh, baby blue, uh, pink and the white, and then the other colors of the rainbow represented uh, as stripes. So I'll give you another minute to uh, catch up with this. Um, Tyler talked about uh, Harvey Milk briefly, and he was a, a, you know, a very important person in the, um, in the history of um, how the LGBTQ community has been um, fighting for their rights over time. Um, but originally, um, there were a lot of rights LGBT community didn't have. And I wonder if, um, Tyler, you wouldn't mind telling us a bit about um, Stonewall and why Stonewall is important in the history of the LGBTQ plus community. Of course. Um, so Stonewall is considered the, the beginning of Pride. Um, it was an event that happened in 1969 at the Stonewall Inn. Members of the LGBT community were being, the LGBTQ plus community were being uh, bullied and harassed, and it finally reached a breaking point on June 28th. Um, Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera are two trans women who were recognized as being the first people to stand up to this bullying, and more and more people kept joining in and fighting back over the course of the next six days. Uh, one year later in 1970, on the first anniversary of this happening, was the first Pride Parade in New York City, and more and more Pride events continued to follow in places like Chicago and San Francisco. And now Pride is celebrated even around the world and has an event called World Pride, which began in 2000. And that same year in 2000, the Stonewall Inn was declared a national landmark. And then in 2016, it sort of got an upgrade and became a national monument. And, New and uh, Stonewall is right here in New York City. You can, you can go visit it uh, and, and that area and, um, and see where, where it all started. So I'm hoping everybody's caught up with the, the sand. Again, your sand should look like this. One thing you don't want to do is start shaking around your, your flower pots here. Uh, I bet you can guess what would happen if you start shaking them around, but I can give you an example. So as you can probably see from this top of this flower pot uh, and, and much of this flower pot actually, is when you start shaking around the flower pot, all that sand starts blending together and you no longer get your, your beautiful rainbow. Uh, and, and you still get a beautiful flower pot. It just won't be a rainbow anymore. So you wanna try not to shake your flower pot that much. Uh, keep it very still when you're using it. Even when you're eventually, when we get to the point where we're putting in our flowers, uh, it's very tempting to put them in and start moving them around. You wanna avoid doing that. Um, try to, to put them in as far as you can. Uh, and then leave them in, uh, don't move them around too much. Because uh, basically what you would do if you start moving them around is you're basically stirring it, uh, like stirring a chocolate milk uh, and it mixes all together. So we want to keep our, our beautiful uh, rainbow the way it is, our pride rainbow. So next is glue. And glue, there's one very important thing I have to tell you about the two, uh, about the glue. Uh, and that is, as it dries, the sand is going to start settling. Um, those of you who know about saturation, that's going to happen. But anyway, the sand will start settling. And what's going to happen is air bubbles are going to start coming up from the sand. 
Now, if we didn't have any glue on top, we wouldn't know that. But because we, we wouldn't see it, right? We wouldn't see the, the air coming out. But what's going to happen is we're going to put a layer of glue and you won't notice it at first, but over time, as we're working with our flowers, you're going to start to see air bubbles come up. So the glue is actually going to start to bubble up in certain places. Won't happen a lot, but there will be two, three, maybe four places where the, the glue starts to bubble up. That's not good. And I'm going to tell you why. We're, and we'll learn how to, uh, how to help it. But I just want to tell you, if we don't do anything about those bubbles, eventually what will happen is the air will fill it, fill it, fill it, and it'll pop and there won't be any glue in that area. And you can probably guess what's going to happen if you, you put a layer of glue on, air bubble comes up, the glue area pops, and there's no glue covering that sand. Let's say you accidentally, you've got your whole craft done and you accidentally tip this over, your sand's gonna just come out of that hole where there's no glue. So you wanna make sure that with the glue, from beginning to end, you're checking to make sure there's no popped air bubbles, okay? And that means that there are no uh, exposed, there's no exposed sand. So keep that in mind as we move along. So, okay, so you're going to take your glue, you should have a bottle like this. Otherwise, any craft glue non-toxic for the kids, craft glue that's non-toxic, that um, will preferably white, like I mentioned earlier, that dries clear, very important, dries clear. Um, in this case, our top sand color is white. If it didn't dry clear, it would just be white blue on top of white sand. But it looks a little prettier when you can see the sand come through the, the, the glue. So you're going to take it. You do not want the top of your glue bottle to touch the sand. So you're going to pour it from a little bit above. And you're going to try to cover the entire thing. Now you're going to be tempted to squeeze this really hard and put a lot of glue. I don't think you want to necessarily do that because this glue will travel, okay? So you want to make sure you're not putting so much glue that, um, uh, that it comes out of the flower pot, basically. So keep an eye on it, very gently see how it spreads. You want to take your time with the glue part. If you were very excited about doing the glue and you just poured it all in, don't worry, it's fine. It will eventually all dry. It'll just take quite a bit longer. As it is, the glue is going to take you a few days to dry. So you want to keep this, once you're done with this craft today, you want to keep it in a place that will um, that nobody will touch. Uh, those of you who have pets, your pets won't get to it. Um, and Keep it there for a few days. You check on it periodically for air bubbles, um, and and then you'll be fine when it dries. So you want to make sure that the glue covers every every bit of that um, open sand. Now it's okay. You can see in mine that there's a little bit of sand color that got mixed with the glue, and that's that's fine. That's just a little sand, little um, little tiny bit of sand that got mixed with the glue on top. But notice the rest of my sand still intact. You can still see my beautiful layers. And the top of it is completely covered uh, in glue. You'll also notice a bubble. Do you guys see that evil bubble right there, right in the corner? I don't know if you can see it. So if you happen to have that beautiful toothpick, you're just going to take it and pop your air bubble. Okay, once you've popped it, you're going to make sure you recover that area with glue. At that point, maybe don't add any more glue, just very gently let the glue flow over to that side. Or if you need to, you can add uh, more glue. One thing you wanna make sure you're doing as well, very gently tap your, very gently, no, I can't do that, very gently, tap the bottom of your flower pot on something. That will help those air bubbles come up. Notice now, I don't know if you can see it, I have another air bubble right, let's see if I can show it to you, right there that's popped and the sand is exposed. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and make sure my, my glue is covering it. And I'm doing that just by tilting. I don't know if that you can see that very well, no. But just tilting it, the cup, so that the glue covers it. While we're here, does anybody have any questions at this point? How are, my, how are the projects going along? I'm going I, to- I, I caught back up. Oh, good. Are you at the glue yet? Yes. My air bubble was directly in the middle. And that happens. And just so you know, that's going to continue to happen throughout until this glue is, is dried, uh, until a layer of the glue is dried. It's very thick glue. Um, so it does take a while to uh, dry and it kind of dries in layers until at least one layer of the glue is dried you're going to keep getting air bubbles. That's why you want to check. I would say, you know, every 15 minutes and then every half an hour and then every hour as it's drying, um, you want to check. I just got a huge air bubble. It was like that big. Um, I will say, I think the air bu bubbles are part of the fun of this craft. I, I like the air bubbles. I think they're super cool. Um, but there are, for, for those of you who, who want a kind of simple, like, why isn't this already done kind of a craft? The air bubbles does do make it a bit more complicated. I so might have you, added a little too much glue. <laughs> if you added too much glue, so the only reason it would be too much glue, there's only two reasons it would be too much glue. One is um, if it's overflowing the pot, in which case you just need to go very quickly uh, before it messes all of your furniture. Go get uh, a, a, maybe a wet towel, ideally not too wet, like slightly damp towel and just wipe it off. Even after that glue dries, it, uh, after you wipe it off, it may dry some residue. Once the whole project is done and it's completely dry in a few days, you can still go back and get that residue off. So don't stress out too much if it overflows. As long as you clean up the major part of it immediately, you're fine. The other reason why you may want to uh, not overdo the glue is because um, it will take longer to dry. So the more glue, more time it takes to dry, you may, you know, it could take a while, but it's fine. Important thing is don't forget about it because those air bubbles keep coming. I just got another one. Not sure if you can, if you can see it. There's it, the sand showing through. The other thing you could do uh, is you can use your toothpick to move the glue over. That's another way to do it. And that's useful, especially as it's drying. So don't worry too much if it, if it boiled over, so to speak. Um, the, uh, the other thing is um, be careful as you're putting the flowers in. You wanna keep that damp rag near you so that if it's already overflowing and then you put a, a flower in it, it may overflow some more. So just wipe off the sides, it does. It won't be any bother other than that. So, okay, good. Uh, seems like we're doing well here. Um, I'm wondering if there's any other, we talked about the, did we talk about, we talked about the different versions of the flags. We talked about the colors. We talked about some important people, uh, uh, Gilbert Baker. We talked about uh, Harvey, Harvey Milk a little bit. Some other important people um, while you're just working on the, the, the glue and uh, getting those air bubbles out. Uh, we may want to talk about is Audrey Lard, who was a poet laureate, so uh, voicing um, the, the, the experiences of people in the LGBT community uh, through poetry um, to really bring those experiences home to people. She became a poet laureate. A very prestigious thing to be in uh, as a, as an artist as a poet. Um, so very important there. Um, and Jazz Jennings, who is a uh, maybe a modern day uh, icon for especially younger generations of people in the LGBT community who uh, have watched her show. Uh, so um, openly trans uh, woman who um, from a very very young age was a very public figure. Um, um, there's a, a children's book called I Am Jazz. Um, she has a show. Um, so uh, really a, a kind of modern day icon uh, of the community. 
So Tyler, is there anything uh, you wanted to add while we're waiting for the glue to, to dry? And then we'll start with the, not to dry, I'm sorry, to get some more air bubbles out. And then we're going to start with the flowers. I was wondering if we could talk about what exactly pride is and and why we celebrate it. Sure. Um, so pride is a movement that's about building people up. We're we're here together today, but if we look back over the past days, months, years, we see a historic pattern of discrimination and barriers for the LGBTQ community. Um, but pride allows us the opportunity to lift each other up and celebrate each other and people in the community, similar to how uh, Black History Month and Women's History Month do that for their respective communities as well. That is very true. And you'll see June more than any other time, you'll see pride flags um, across, the, across the nation and increasingly so, I think. Um, excellent, excellent. Are we ready to do the flowers? Stacey, if you have a question. Yes. When is the parade? That is a very good question. Um, I, I believe it's virtual this year. Uh, Tyler, do you know offhand? Uh, and and I, we should mention though that depending on where you are, there's parades in different locations across the country, across the world. Um, Tyler, do you have that information by any chance? I'm going to double check real, really quickly, um, but I believe that there are in-person events in New York City this year. And I believe that they are tomorrow. So Tyler's gonna check on that while we work on the flowers um, and we'll have more information for you, but that is an excellent question. And I know I've, I've gone the last few years, obviously not last year because of COVID it got canceled, but uh, I've gone the last few years with my family and it's such a wonderful event. We actually walked in the parade um, with, a, with uh, different years, different groups, uh, but it's such a fun event to walk in uh, or to uh, watch, uh, whether you're watching at home or whether you're going in person, it's just such, it really is a celebration. And I think that's the, the key to what Tyler was just talking about before is that this is a celebration. The community, uh, LG, uh, LGBTQ plus community has really um, overcame obstacles early on that uh, the bullying that they received, uh, the rights that they didn't have like marriage equality. And um, this is a month, although we can celebrate throughout the year, this is a month to celebrate the progress uh, and pride in, in the community. So let's start adding some flowers. So you have hopefully in front of you lots of different flowers. You may have some that look like roses, like these. You may have um, some made of fabric, like these. And it's important to know that um, while you can have all one type, all fabric or all plastic that I, I, I recommend a variety because it gives a kind of different texture to it. Um, there is a beauty to have it all one color, all uh, one type of material, even all one type of flower in different colors. But um, there is something to be said for just having an eclectic mix um, of different types of materials. So we have these that are a little bit of kind of like a ceramic glaze. We have this that's plastic for those who have that. We have the fabric flowers. And then we have, uh, you may have some version of some kind of extra special glittery item, right? Uh, again, this is too high, but you may, for example, have cut off a little stem of it, okay? And, um, I might avoid, you'll notice that the, that the glittery stuff I have here are not flowers, which is interesting, but I tend to find that if you make the flowers off flower glittery, if you make all the flowers glittery, then that's kind of overwhelming. If you make one flower glittery, then all the other flowers kind of, you don't notice them, they kind of pale in comparison. So having just some accent pieces, some um, foliage, some greenery that is, um, glittery, extra sparkly perhaps, adds a nice little flavor to it. So, okay, before we put your flowers in, check your flower pots again, make sure, uh, by the way, you can also, what you can do with your toothpick is you can also, if you see a big bubble, the tiny bubbles don't worry about. I have a few tiny bubbles in here. Those are not a problem, but the 
if you see um, a big bubble starting, you can go ahead and preemptively pop it and just make sure you move the glue over. Now you may find that you're already, um, your glue's already drying if you need, and so you can't cover it, that's fine. You can add a little bit more glue, not a problem at all. Don't overdo it because then you have that risk of it overflowing, but you can totally add. The other thing is if you have the bendable flower pot, the, the plastic one, you'll find that it's actually um, squishy. Don't squish too hard. You don't want the glue to come bubbling up. But if you squish it a little bit, that will also help to get some of those, um, to help the sand settle and get some of the air bubbles up. So double check your, your pot, make sure that your glue is covering all of the sand. Don't worry if you have speckles of sand. This one has kind of speckles of sand in it. That's fine. You just don't want to see like holes from the, the popped bubbles. So what you're going to do is you're going to become a flower arranger. Think of yourself like a, a florist and you get to arrange these flowers anytime you want. Before you put them in, take a look at them. You want to start with the flower you think is the, is the centerpiece of this. Which flower do you like the best? And you're going to, to put that one in. While you're thinking about that, you can also think about where you, maybe there's some of these flowers you don't like at all. You don't like the color. You don't like the type of flower. That's fine. You don't have to use every flower here. I don't recommend using every flower here. There's a lot of them. But pick which flower you want to be the centerpiece. I'm going with my brightest color. Uh, that's just an individual. And I'm going to go ahead uh, and I'll put it in in just a second. I did want to show you Notice how high these flower pots are. There's a little room. Again, you have just enough sand in your sand packets, but if you were doing this and you just had big bowls of sand like I did, you'd want to be, to be careful to measure out the sand because it's very easy to have like one color take up a lot of room, one color to take up a little tiny room that it disappears when the other sand goes in. So you'd want to measure it out in advance. Let's say you wanted to do other types of flags Maybe you only wanted the trans flag or the original fried flag, whatever it is, you want to kind of measure out how many um, of those half teaspoons, uh, or maybe it's a full teaspoon, or maybe it's a tablespoon that you would need evenly to space that out. So ours are nicely spaced out. I'm hoping yours looks something like this. And then you have the white uh, sand on top with the white glue on top. No bubbles. There's a little bit of room, ideally, so that the glue is not going to bubble over once you start poking it. So here you go. You're going to take a flower and you're just going to put it in. When you do that, make sure you pierce the sand. Notice how long it's taking me. You've got to go all the way down, all the way down on that sand. Okay. Go all the way and think of it like you're at the beach and you want to uh, dip your toes in the sand. You want to like really like dig your, dig your feet into the sand. I'm noticing another air bubble, so I'm gonna going to cover that up. And as you do this, you'll notice some, some sand, some bubbles coming up. Unless it's a major bubble, you don't have to fix it now, but go ahead and you can start adding some more flowers in. Again, every time you add the flowers, go ahead and pierce it all the way to the bottom. You want the flowers to be pretty close to the bottom, but at different heights. So some can be a little bit higher. You don't, what you don't want, uh, maybe is you know something like this. You don't want it poking out like that. So uh, what you can do, because that'll look a little strange, right? You want it to look like a bouquet. What you can do is if you have a scissor, you can just cut off the extra, or you can just go ahead and bend. These are very bendable. Go ahead and bend. You can wrap it around so it looks a little nicer and goes in. Make sure you uh, pinch the bottom so it's uh, a point. It'll make it go in easier. So you can go ahead and just start putting your flowers in any way you want, okay? Remember to save a tiny bit of room because you're going to want to have um, room for that fo foliage in the end. So you don't want to only have the flowers. You wanna make sure you have the room for the foliage, put your flowers in. While you're doing that, uh, Tyler, is there anything else you wanted to, um, Tell us about looking over my notes as well. Um, well, I wanted to follow up on the, the pride question. Um, Great. So New York City pride 
There's actually a uh, youth youth pride is this afternoon at three, and it's virtual for New York City. Um, and then tomorrow is the the larger, um, like bigger events and parade and all that. I believe the it looks like the parade itself is going to be uh, virtual, but there are like street events going on. I thought it might be virtual this year. I thought I had heard that. Thank you for, for giving us that information. Now we are gonna send you up, um, out some follow-up information. The information about um, the Pride Parade is not going to be in that information uh, because the dates change but, uh, from year to year but you can always find that information online every year when you, when you want to know. Okay, so you're putting in your flowers. Once you're done putting in your flowers, then you're going to uh, go ahead and put in your foliage. I can tell you some tips there. Maybe you just have one piece. So this was mine. I think it's a little red heavy for my for my taste, but I think once I put the 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 foliage in, it will break up the monotony of all that red right there. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put in a. Let me see where I want to put that in. I think I'm going to put it here. Again, make sure you plant that all the way as far down as you can. And there's my my little spark of color. Oops, excuse me. My little spark of color in that in that flower pot. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish off my other one. Now, as you're doing this, you want to be aware that the sand's going to shift. So we're going to, we may have to put in some more, more glue. The glue is actually drying pretty fast, which I was happy to see. Now this is a bit more of an eclectic one that I have here. And my little spark of color here with the gold. And actually I believe I have one more of those. Now, does, uh, did anybody have any questions before I give you some final tips on this? Can we show ours? I'm sorry? Can we show ours? I would love that. Robbie, are you able to unpin me? Oh. For a second so we can see hers? I would love to see yours. It shows you as not pinned, but let me see if I just try pinning down here. Okay, there we go. <gasps> There's Robbie, fantastic. Can you pin Sonia? Oh, I thought I did. Oh, well, I see you. For me, it's Sonia, <laughs> okay. So let's see if we can get Sonia's. Uh, right. Oh, do we see you yet? No. All right, Rob is gonna work on, on getting you as the main person so we could, uh, you can share. Yeah, is this uh, Sonia or is it Megamiko? Uh, you have to spotlight. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Anya. Thank you. Here you go. Oh, look at that. <gasps> what beautiful colors. You've... I love the purple flower in there with the pink. I think you picked excellent colors and the yellow. <gasps> Do you like it? That is fantastic. I'm so glad you shared. And if anybody else wants to share, we'd be happy to see it. If, if Robbie can do the, uh, the <laughs> I can, do that again, I can spotlight again. I Thank can show you. mine. Yes, I would love to see it. Thank you for sharing yours. And what a great idea to share each other's. Can we see another one? Let's see. How do I make your mine? I would love that. Let's see, Coco Miko. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, I love it. And the layers are so nice and even. I love the ones you chose. Do you want to show yours? I love it. 
That so is great. The yellow is so nice and bright and with the tall flower, it looks so pretty. What do you, what did you guys think? Did you like this craft? Yeah, okay, I'm so glad to hear that. So before we finish up though, I have to tell you a very important thing because if you look down at your flower pots and if you can go ahead, Bobby, and spotlight me again, that would be swell. Um, if you look down at your flower, pot, flower pots, the glue is drying and thank you folks for sharing. I'm so happy you folks shared your uh, really beautiful work. So you might see that there are some holes now where the sand could come through. So what you want to do is either take, let's say a toothpick, or you can take one of the flowers you didn't use. You can try to move the glue over to cover up those spots. Now it may be that the glue's dried, uh, too dry to do that, or the holes are too big. You may have to put a tiny bit more glue. But you have to be really careful. What you might even want to do is put the glue on a separate piece of paper. Okay, so I've just put it over here instead of putting it in the flower pot. And I'm going to dip my toothpick, or if you have another flower, you can dip the, use the stem of a flower, or really anything you have that you can just, um, you know, attach a little piece of glue to. And you can go ahead and kind of paint the glue on so it covers those, those holes. Okay, so go ahead and do that for just a minute. and make sure you've got your holes covered. If that doesn't work, if the holes are too big or you've got air bubbles, you can go ahead and just pour the glue in. Just try not to get it on the flowers uh, would be key. So you can keep those flowers look nice and pretty. Okay, I, and I just found a little thing, a little air bubble right there. Okay, so everybody's just, now we're just doing some touch-up work because we have these holes. We're going to do some touch-up work in here. Excellent. Oh my gosh, this time has just flown by. I'm looking over my notes to make sure I, we've covered everything we need to cover. Um, one, one thing you might be wondering is like, what do you do with it when it's done? And uh, I mean, I think it's just nice to have pretty things around the house. And the ones I got to see are so pretty. I think you can just have them as decoration. Um, for adults who did the, um, the glass ones, these will last a really long time. I mean, nothing in here will break. So they're like actual house decorations that you can keep out. Um, people will ask you, oh, where'd you get that from? And be, you know, lovely, tell them about Inform Your Community. But uh, you can also use them as paperweights. If you feel them, they're a bit hef hefty, right? So they make very good paperweights. Uh, you can also give it as a gift. I call these giftable crafts because they're so pretty. People would like receiving these. Uh, and it's a nice gesture. Uh, inform your community. We're about civic, uh, civic engagement, um, civility, civil rights, um, and, and, and civics. And this is part of civility. It's just doing some nice a nice thing for somebody. So giving somebody a nice gift, who maybe needs a smile today, uh, something to make them smile today, you can give them a nice little gift um, to make them happy. So um, what you don't want to do is you don't want to turn it into a magnet. I bet you can guess why you don't want to turn it into a magnet, but I'll tell you, uh, if, it, if somebody made it a magnet, let's say you put a magnet on the back of it, you put it on the fridge, and one day you're opening the fridge and you're just you know in a rush and you just slam that fridge door, I bet you can guess what's going to happen. Yeah, I know you know. That magnet's going to fall off the fridge because the door got slammed too hard. And there's going to be sand everywhere because the base of the plastic, and you certainly wouldn't want to put it back on the glass one, but the, the, the plastic base would crack, a little crack perhaps, and then the sand would be everywhere. So whatever you do, don't put a magnet on this. They're definitely meant to be on a table. Um, so excellent. I hope you uh, will make good use of these. Uh, and let me just look over my notes for one more second, but I think we've uh, uh, almost covered everything. So um, one thing you, you might notice is that in some of our names, we have our pronouns. Uh, I probably should have uh, mentioned that earlier when I introduced myself, uh, you know, I should have introduced myself, I should say. So my name's Stacy. for those of you who don't know me, and um, my pronouns are she and her, 
And you should know that um, uh, pronouns uh, refer to what we use to refer to people when we're not using their actual name, right? But what we don't often realize is that pronouns are something that we can self-identify as having. So I might uh, have a different pronoun um, than somebody else who looks just like me. So I might use she and her refer to me uh, to refer to myself. Somebody else might use he and him or they and their, uh, and there's other pronouns as well. So uh, just to explain um, why she and her is in my, is uh, with my name. And also I should have said my name earlier is Stacy. So sorry about that. Does anybody have any questions? Was I that thorough? Everybody's fine? Can I see? All right, looks like there's, there's no hands up. Okay. So um, Tyler or, or Robbie, did you folks have anything else you wanted to say? Um, I don't think so. I didn't make a mess, if that's uh, something to, to say. You, you did or did not? I did not. Congratulations. I hope, uh, I hope nobody made a mess. We don't want any parents to be mad at us for that. And uh, Robbie, how about, uh, how about you? Not only am I asking, did you make a mess, but do you want to uh, send us off today? Sure. I did make a little bit of a mess, but thanks to your note about putting out paper, which I hadn't thought of, it's all going to be easy to clean up. So thank you for that. <laughs> Excellent. I'm so glad. Robbie, did you want to show us yours, by the way? Yeah. You can spotlight yourself. And uh, if you want to do the conclusion, since you, you gave us the introduction. Oh, it did come out so lovely. I like that you have lower flowers in the front, and then it stacks higher towards the mm -hmm. back. And I used to work at a florist. Oh, <laughs> that's perfect. And you have the sprays coming out the back. I yeah. had not. I had no idea we had an expert here. Uh, <laughs> I had no idea I would have had you do the craft. What you know, you could have let us. <laughs> but I am very grateful you have that that beautiful one. Everybody's came out so well. I'm really glad that everybody participated. That was fun. Thank you, Stacy, for your instruction. It was very clear and informative and fun. And we're going to send an infographic out to everybody um, as a follow up so that you can continue reading and learning uh, about pronouns, about the LGBTQ community. And um, we're also going to send out a brief survey of what you thought of the event. So please take the time to just um, quickly respond. Your feedback is important to us. And look for more great Inform Your Community events, uh, not only celebrations, but we have programs for adults as well. And thank you all so much for coming. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for joining us and making such beautiful crafts with us. That was great. Great job, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.